Hey, so over the last few weeks, I've been using a different sort of smartphone to really push the envelope to see what kind of smartphones are out there. And the phone I've been using is the TCL 30. This is a smartphone that I didn't really expect to use because TCL is a company that I associate televisions to, but for them to be making smartphones really piqued my interest and I thought I'd give this a shot. And right off the bat, as you can see, it's pretty thin, pretty lightweight. So this is 7.7 .7 millimeters thin, 184 grams, and it can easily slip into your pocket, slip into any backpack if you wanna carry it anywhere. But it's not particularly inspiring in terms of durability. So it's got a plastic back, a plastic frame, as well as a glass front. And I'm not going to recommend uh, you using this phone without a screen protector or without any sort of protection in terms of a case. So if you want to use this phone for a long period of time, you'll have to keep that in mind. As far as the ports go, they're pretty standard. You've got a fingerprint scanner on the right edge, which works pretty well. And you've also got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So this can be used for things like FM radio. And if you wanna just plug in your headphones without having to charge them or buy a separate wireless pair, this is going to be great. So while the smartphone is fairly basic in terms of a budget one, I think the big selling point is the display. It's a 6.7 inch panel on the front. And for this price tag, you're getting a 1080p panel, which is very rare. Usually you'd see companies go for a 720p panel, which is a lower resolution. But this time you not only get a 1080p panel, but you also get an AMOLED display. And thus far, me using the smartphone, I've had no complaints with the display whatsoever. It's really bright, even outdoors. It's got a flat design, which means no accidental touches. And for multimedia content, colors really pop. So I could be watching things like sports, or I could be watching a series on YouTube or Netflix, and everything works just as expected as you'd find on pretty much a high end, maybe double the price of this smartphone. Uh, so in terms of display, I don't have any complaints. Plus it's got stereo speakers. So it gives you this holistic experience. They're not the most powerful stereo speakers, but definitely better than a single firing speaker that you could easily cover while uh, watching any sort of content. You get the second one. So whenever and wherever you are, it's plenty loud and you'll be able to do uh, your media consumption just as well as you do it with any other smartphone. I've also enjoyed browsing text on the smartphone and just reading things in general. I think the display is just really good for the price tag. So in terms of multimedia and display experience, I'd give this pretty much a very high ranking. Although where this thing falls short is with its processing power. So this thing has an octa-core processor. It's a MediaTek chipset Helio G37 and a pretty basic GPU to pair with that and four gigabytes of RAM, which I think for 2022 is a bit limiting. Plus you only get 64 gigabytes of storage and it's also eMMC storage. And what that means is it's a slower version of even UFS 2.1 storage, which is already a few years outdated. So if you're trying to install things or trying to load things from memory, this will take time. So when you open up the gallery application, uh, photos take just that bit longer to load, especially if you have a very, very densely populated uh, folders folder. And in terms of just the overall experience, it's not as smooth as you typically associate with any smartphone, even at this budget price tag, because let's face it, even at 699 dirhams, uh, the price at which the smartphone sells, you do get smartphones now with a 90 hertz panel, you do get smartphones with a higher end chipset, and all of that makes a difference. So for TCL to be sacrificing on that is a bit questionable, although with that display, it kind of makes sense. You kind of have to be patient with the smartphone, which let's face it, in 2022, we'd want the smartphone to be the one that's one step ahead of us, but that's what you have to do with the TCL 30. And for the job that I have, my day job, uh, I get emails like pretty much every minute. And for me to go through these emails and pretty much for this to load all of these emails takes a lot of time and it's just a laggy experience. So if you're someone like me who is constantly on their smartphone and using it in a very demanding manner, the four gigabytes of RAM will definitely cut it short paired with that processor. So keep that in mind if you're trying or buying out for this smartphone. And I think in the same manner, I wouldn't really recommend you buying this smartphone for playing games. 
And also the software is a limitation. This is TCL's UI, TCL 4.0, I believe. And I feel like the UI just takes away a lot of what this smartphone could have been. Uh, it's a very limited smartphone package for the price tag, which is understandable. But if this was shipped with, let's say, a stock Android experience, it would take much less of a toll on the processing power. And I think it would be much smoother in terms of performance. Right now, even things that TCL has implemented it's not really the greatest way of doing it. So for example, if you're trying to lower the volume while watching a video, for example, the volume bar takes pretty much one third of the space on the display and covers what you're watching entirely, which I just don't think should be the case. And TCL really needs to look into refining the software experience if it wants to stick to the experience. I'd say the camera on this thing, the 50 megapixel camera is really good for taking those one-off images. But if you're someone who is inspired by what you see around, the 50 megapixel camera will definitely be short-lived. Uh, the shutter speed is pretty slow and the video quality from the camera is definitely not something I would recommend. The eight megapixel camera for your selfies is also good in certain situations, but this isn't a smartphone you should rely on for photography. And for that, you'd need to look for other options. What this smartphone is really good for though is battery life. So it's a 5,010 milliamp hour battery on this thing and it lasts pretty much entire days. Uh, it lasts for two days on a single charge, which is incredible. I just love the battery capacity and the battery life on the TCL30. I think it's great, it's fabulous, and I could use it without charging whatsoever. So for me, I was using 4G with hotspot enabled, uh, hotspotting to another smartphone in my office, and it was working absolutely seamlessly without warming up, without doing any of that. So in terms of battery performance and endurance, you're gonna get full days on days, so no complaints whatsoever. Plus the charging is really, really fast on this thing. So yeah, using the TCL30 has been quite the experience. It's definitely been a challenge coming from a smartphone that pretty much does everything flawlessly and smoothly to something like this, which does require a bit of patience. But I think over time, you can adapt to it, although I wouldn't recommend this being your primary smartphone unless you don't need your smartphone for demanding tasks. If you're just calling on your smartphone, if you're just texting, uh, playing the odd games like Candy Crush and just browsing the web for very minimal things, then the smartphone could be something that you could eye yourself uh, or wanting yourself. But in terms of a heavy demanding user who uses their camera, who uses the smartphone for things like emails, lots of multitasking, and perhaps even high-end gaming, the TCL30 will not cut it for you. So. Thanks for watching this one. Do let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe for more videos just like this one. This was Vabhav and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.